If you're listening to this right now, that means yet again, it is another one of my days off where I sat down and I said, I need to finally just sit down, record another episode of this show because, of course, another month has passed by. I have not put out anything, but, you know, I needed to do a season closer. I talked about it in my two most recent episodes. I said season one is coming to a close, but I was telling myself I'm going to actually make a season finale, and here we are. Uh, We started, well not we, I started publishing these episodes in April of this year, that is 2023. I'm recording this on Wednesday, September 20th, 2023, so it only took like five months. I've been recording stuff for the show for nearly a year, well like nine months, nine, ten months-ish, and I'm finally done with that first season. There's stuff that I recorded that didn't get published in the first season that maybe it'll come back in the future, but I just, my goal was to at least do one season, and here we are at the end of that road. And I'm going to have to find something to look at on my computer to keep me stimulated while I'm talking about it. So right now I pulled up a Pinterest. Yeah, I'm a male. I'm a straight male in 2023 with the Pinterest. So what about it? Get after me if you feel like it. But man, it's got cool stuff to look at. And I got this uh, new LED light. So wait, what's been going on in my life? You're probably wondering why am I even going to record this? I don't need to get too much into Pinterest. But I've been working on lighting in my apartment trying to get some more stuff going on because we have like big lights everyone's got big light the overhead the you know the light on your fan or like the light on the ceiling but i'm looking for more like lamp stuff led lights i like to have some colored lights in there because i feel like i've got solid wall decorations but i feel more comfortable in lights that i can choose so i found this one thing on amazon it wasn't too much it was like maybe ten dollars the battery doesn't last very long but it's like the size of a relay race baton and it's got leds on the inside of it and it's got a bunch of different settings and i just set it up on top of a lamp because it still lights up the lampshade without having to use the actual lamp light and i'm i like more of a soft light when it's coming from lamps i'm not really a big fan of leds like white leds if i'm gonna go on if i'm gonna be on camera on my computer like i'm looking at right now i'm not on camera obviously my little thing is shut but if i want to stream i'm gonna prefer to have some white LED light just because the picture is a little bit better. But I've been watching streams, uh, not a whole lot, but I did watch a stream this past weekend. I was like, you know, I kind of want to get back into doing that again sometime soon. Uh, It's just more about the sound. And I like the way this microphone sounds more than the new one that I just got. Shout out to a uh, new friend of mine hooking it up with a Blue Yeti microphone. I've always kind of wanted one of these things. I remember my freshman year of college when I joined the radio station, we had people that would record stuff for other organizations or other things that they had going on with these Blue Yetis. Or we had these Blue Snowball microphones for a little while during uh, the pandemic and after the pandemic because we thought we might have to do stuff from home. So we invested in like 50 of these things and we never really used them. So that kind of sucks. But at least the thought was there. And they have those. They can do something with those in the future if they really want to. But man, this Pinterest looks awesome. I think whenever I touch the cable, it's sending like a frequency. I don't know. It did that in my headphones. I have my headphones hooked up to my mixer so I can like hear myself better when I talk. The levels on the computer are looking fairly low when I'm recording this right now on Audition but I'm not too worried about it. I need to get into the notes in my phone. If I'm going to talk about stuff for like an hour long, then I'm going to have to look through the notes. But I don't know. I've, I kind of, I've been looking for more like new characters. Like if you know me and I have like this characters list because I, there are some interesting people in this world and sometimes I'll have to write down a note about them if I see something. And there was like one random thing. I don't think it had anything to do with uh, any of my coworkers, but like a random thing I wrote down. It wasn't in the characters list, but like having that one random degenerate gambler co- worker that they always talk about sports and then you finally find out why is because like they've got their entire rent on the line it's like oh that makes sense as to why you are so invested in these sports but that's a character from someone else's job that I remember writing down months ago but let me get back into that thing real quick I'm gonna take a pause and then we'll pick right back there are a lot of notes in this damn phone that I completely forget about like uh the other day I went on a hike and I like kind of got in close contact with a cicada and I'm looking back at a note that I took over two months ago about having full contact with or close contact with those things because where I live I'm near an airport I'm near more the woods part of uh, Nashville and East Nashville ish if you could say that I don't know I live in like a strange part it's not strange at all but there's a lot of cicadas that's what I'm trying to say and you can always hear them but I never really get to see them but I guess whenever I wrote that down I saw one and I saw one up close like the other day I mean I was like not face to face with the thing but I got up close it was just chilling on this bush like I was on a hike and I was like whoa that's a cicada right there 
seeing a bunch of butterflies flying around. I don't know. It felt good to have a Sunday off because like with the place that I work, we don't get a whole lot of Sundays because our place is usually open seven days a week. But a lot of concerts, a lot of construction, a lot of things going on. So I've been able to enjoy Sundays off to just get to be outside because if you know me, Sunday is one of my favorite days of the week. I like to be able to just do whatever I want, sleep in, especially now that uh, soccer season is back. I'm not going to get on too much of a sports tangent, but my team usually plays Saturday mornings. But man, they got a Sunday game this week weekend it's at like 8 30 and my i'm my rhythm circadian rhythm even though i don't truly understand what that means i've kind of got a rhythm going on with my sleeping schedule right now so i know i'm gonna wake up like right around the time that i need to just to watch this game like i'm not gonna have to wake up early because my body's gonna be like all right it's time to get up like today is my day off so i slept in later i still naturally woke up at just the time that i have been because i have an alarm that'll wake me up at basically 6 30 any day of the week like a, that's the i have like a bedtime thing on my iPhone that once it passes like 10, 15 at night, all my notifications are silenced. My screen goes gray. It's like sleep mode. It's a whole function that they have with iOS that I really enjoy. Um, a lot of the times I will turn my notifications back on because if I'm working late at night, I need to see the notifications on my phone. If like my manager or whatever texts me, like if I need live updates as to what's going on or if I'm awake and I don't really mind if my phone's getting notifications, I'm going to turn it off. But if I'm going to bed, it's really nice that I can turn that on and then I know that that alarm is going to go off at, I think it's at for 625. It's either 625 or 630. But basically every morning I wake up anywhere between 615 to 645 naturally. And if I need to get up and start moving, I can. And But I'm also able to go back to sleep. So like that's what I do on a day off. And then I've just kind of piddled around a day. Just enjoy the fact that I have the day off, you know. I mean, I work full time, so I'm going to enjoy whenever I get to relax a little bit. But like I said, uh, it's been too long since I've sat down and recorded one of these because the most most recent one that I recorded was in August and it was a show that was also pre-recorded back in February. So I haven't sat down and given you a full really like 45 minutes to an hour of my time. Right now I'm only about seven minutes into this, but whenever I go back and cut out all the gasps and the dead air and the trying to make it sound better, like jump cut edit wise to keep your attention span, because if you know me, I have a bad attention span. Um, and I mean, it kind of keeps you on your toes if there's just not a whole lot of lulls in here. Cause I don't know what you're doing right now, whoever you are listen if you're sitting at a desk in a cubicle maybe you're driving down the interstate maybe you're like taking a shower or something but I try and edit out any of the dead air just to kind of keep things rolling keep things naturally going uh sometimes I'll of course like pause I don't need to even get into the details of that you already know what's going on but the note the note that I have to discuss on my phone it's just called dog days 2023 and I don't really like the name of that but I just it kind of worked with it because it was mostly August when I was writing all these notes down and there's stuff from September in there and I meant to do this kind of as my summer closer and I know the end of the summer is technically this week I figured that's like a good time to line up when I'm gonna end season one of the quarter life crisis so if you've made it this far into the show I don't know if you've listened to every single episode if this is the first thing you've ever clicked on maybe you just clicked on and you skipped to right here in this very moment thanks for tuning in hopefully I uh Hopefully I can make it laugh or something like that. I don't know. I just like talking about stuff. I, I was joking around and saying the other day, my life's purpose is to share my opinion because nobody asked. And that's kind of what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying I'm sharing my opinion about this cool stuff I'm looking at on Pinterest. Like, uh, you know, skies, sunsets, campfires, jellyfish, uh, like neon signs and stuff like that. It's just cool, man, to be able to look at that. Get the LED thing above it. Oh, I forgot another LED light that I got. So whenever we went to Bonnaroo, we had this thing that they found at the Walgreens. One of the girls on our camp group found it. It was like a pink neon flamingo that came with the batteries. And I saw that. I said, I need to get me something like that for my own apartment. But I never went to Walgreens or CVS to go seek out something like this. But whenever I was driving back home from Labor Day weekends, yeah, we're going to talk about Labor Day weekend on this episode. Definitely. That was one of my favorite weekends of the year. But on my way back there, I stopped at the Love's Gas station in Hope Hole, Alabama. I can't even think of what exit is, um, but that's off 65, just northbound, just south of Montgomery. And I go in there, I see this like palm tree looking thing. So it's got like a yellow kind of bark thing for the palm tree. And then it's just like green. I'm not, I'm looking at it right now. It's not lit up. It's across my room from me over there, but I figured that would be, I don't know. It like reminds me of home a little bit. We don't really have a whole lot of palm trees down there. We kind of do at the beach area where Gulf Shores is. And I'm, I mean, I'm an hour from there where I grew up, but they had ones of like a cactus. They had a couple different ones, but I don't know. I got the palm tree and I dig the palm tree. And also 
Now that summer is over, the cooler weather is coming in. You can sit outside on your back patio, listen to the radio. You can grill out. I'm basically just talking about what I'm excited to start doing in these weekends as the weather starts getting a little colder. But as I mentioned about lighting, I finally put some lights up outside. I've had these just regular Christmas lights, just ones that you plug into an outlet in the wall. And I finally hung them up yesterday on my back porch because I've lived in Nashville for about a year now, but I never really had a chance to set those up because when I first moved in our outside thing, the outlet didn't work. But now that it works, it's connected to the power. I hooked it up yesterday and last night after I got home after work, I got off late, went out there, plugged it in just so I could see it. And it, it lit it up way more than I thought it was going to. Normally when you get stuff like that, they're not very bright, but these are like yellow kind of LED. So they're LEDs, so they're bright, and like when you wave your hand in front of the LED light, it kind of does that weird thing. It's different from like regular soft lighting. You know what I'm talking about, you know. Actually, I don't know if you know at all what I'm talking about, but I know what I'm talking about. If you've never experienced this whatever phenomenon, I'm sure that there's a vocab word for it. But with certain LED lights, if you go and wave your hand in front of it, kind of like a strobe, it'll make a weird like a delay, your eyes just can't process it. Either that or maybe I'm just a slow human being. Probably a little bit of both. It don't matter to me, but Dog Days 2023. That's the note that we're going through. And I wrote down after I said how much I hate the title, at least it has the alliteration because I like using alliterations. It's just how I enjoy speaking and it kind of rolls off the tongue nicely for me. It's kind of why I went with DJP. Just kind of rolled. There's not even that much of an alliteration right there. But it works out nicely for me, especially whenever I'm talking to this SM58. My levers are looking kind of low, but I can add a little bit more sound, amplify it whenever I post this episode. But I sound like I'm just whispering. I kind of am right now. I'm trying not to be super loud. I just keep talking about this note with actually diving into it. But the first thing I got to talk about on there is how bad that I've been about keeping up with writing down notes on my phone over the past couple of months. Life has just gotten busy, like ever since I took vacation. After the Alaska episode was published, I really kind of didn't take notes for a little while. Uh, I went home for Labor Day weekend. I've just had things going on. Life gets in the way. But recently, I've been trying to write down more stuff because I need to take notes more at work just to stay more on top of things, of course, but also take notes of things that are happening in life, taking good pictures of things, just kind of taking a moment to breathe things in, especially whenever it's not super hot outside. Like I said, I've been trying to just, whenever I go out now that it's getting cooler and I'm not worried about immediately just drinking water when I stop or finding shade. I'm just like, man, I gotta have to stop and take it in whenever the light is coming from a certain direction and you can see like the brightness on the other side of a leaf. I'm really getting into my tree hut early on in this episode right now. But here's one of the first other things that I talked about. Other than my lack of writing, I wanted to talk about whenever you're listening to a new song, you're like, God, I really dig the instrumentals. I like this effect that they got with the guitar. And then that singer opens up their mouth and then I just immediately lose interest which is kind of a bummer. Uh, That is something I experienced a lot when I was the music director of the radio station I worked at in college because people would send us great music, and I I like the instrumentals more than almost anything else people would send us. When I worked at the radio station, that's when I got into Krung Bin, so I'll always be appreciative of that. There were other bands that I liked, but there were so many times when I would be hooked on a song, and then I'd just hear the singer, and their lyrics are terrible, their voice is bad. Most of the time for me, though, it takes a while for me to get adjusted to a singer. Especially, here's like a dumb example, but like in high school, I was a big fan of Chance the Rapper. Not really a big fan of Chance the Rapper anymore. It just takes me a while to get used to certain voices. Like Charlie Crockett, that's another person whose voice I'm kind of getting used to. I don't like his voice as much as I like Sturgill Simpson. Same with a lot of bluegrass artists. You kind of have to get used to the way that their voice sounds. Like I know I definitely didn't like Alison Krauss before this year, but once I started listening to it, just like investing my time into really sitting down and listening to high quality, well mixed music. I will get on that bluegrass tangent, especially with that Alison Krauss Union Station 2001 album, new favorite. Whoever produced that album did such a good job with the different levels that they mixed and mastered everything i don't even know if it's been remastered yet but that album just sounds great get yourself some good headphones in either that or like any steely dan album if you got a nice pair of studio or stereo headphones more than anything gotta have good stereo headphones i have like professional studio headphones just because you know i i I work on this show i i feel like i gotta give myself some good quality i'm more confident with better quality sounding stuff, like just talking to myself like this, because a lot of people hate their voice. Clearly, I don't hate mine that much if I've done over a dozen episodes of a podcast with me talking, so I gotta at least make myself sound good to myself. I'm gonna, if I'm, I'm gonna get into the weeds about this right now, and I've just popped this shit out of the microphone when I did that, so I'm gonna move on, because I hate whenever you listen to a new song and you really like it, and then you just get bummed out by the singer. That happens to me all the time. 
It's why I suck at finding new music that I like. It takes me so long to find a new artist that I like. I just listen to the same artists and a lot of their songs, and then slowly but surely I'll make their way through their entire discography without burning out stuff that I like. There are certain songs that I like that I will not listen to on Spotify because I'd rather hear it on the radio. I was talking about this last night because some songs, they really just they get to you, like All Yorn by Tyler Childers. I, I always say that I'm partial towards the redheads, the freckled, fair-skinned individuals, specifically this guy and All Yorn. It's just such a good song. Like when I heard it at Bonnaroo, hearing something live kind of feels like it completes a circle for me. If I've been listening to a song for years and then I get to hear it live in concert, I was like, I gotta I gotta tone it back on this song a lot for a little while. Like after I saw the Marshall Tucker bands, I haven't really listened to a lot of their music. After I saw Dead and Company this past summer, I didn't listen to a whole lot of their music because I was already interested in these people. But I didn't know much about Charlie Crockett. I've seen him this summer, and he's been easily one of the top artists for my entire summer. I am excited to see what my September Recidify is going to be. I know my August one, I think I did have a Charlie Crockett song in there. I know he's been in the top of my Recidify thing, and I don't know exactly how accurate that thing is whenever they go into your Spotify stats and they pick out your top 10 songs. But either way, he's been on there. The last thing that I'm going to say about being the music director and people sending me songs that I like and then I hear him sing, whenever I was in those shoes, the best thing that you could do, and this is so terrible, but you got to send me a cool picture on that album cover. If the picture's not very cool, if I got a busy day ahead of me, I'm likely not even going to let it pass across my desk. I'll look at it, and I'm not going to throw it in the garbage. But if you saw pictures of that studio, a lot of the stuff that had cool pictures on it ended up on the wall because it added to the aesthetic of the room, if you want to put it that way. I really do love how that studio turned out. And if I'm thinking about it when I'm doing my social media side of this, maybe I can go find that picture and we can talk about just when you hear the song that you like and then you hear him sing, and then you just check out. That's just been something that's been something I've had to deal with for a majority of my life, especially with finding new music. But if you send me a cool picture, it's going to get my time. Today is a Snapchat year ago thing from like... 2019 so four years ago a buddy of mine from home my buddy Reagan I've talked about him plenty of times he came to visit me at Auburn and there's this Snapchat thing of us listening to this Iguana Rock album and I mean this is one of the CDs that I got when I was a music director that I really liked because it was all instrumentals it was just some dad rock garage band type of album and it wasn't bad I think I still have the CD somewhere Oh, wait, no, I know exactly what happened to that CD. So when I got rid of my old car, I used to drive a Honda CRV, 2011 make, uh, like SE. Well, the radio kind of started crapping out on me. Like uh, my aux cord stopped working first. And if I had something plugged into the charging port when I listened to the radio, I couldn't get as good of a frequency. Or I had like the Bluetooth thing plugged into where the car charging thing would be. And if there was too much stuff plugged in, like there just like wasn't enough electricity going around. But the real thing that got on my nerves, I had three CDs in this car. It had a six CD changer, which is legendary. I wish that my new car had that. I've only got one in my new car, but the three CDs that I had in there, CD number one was this Joe Olnick Iguana Rock album, where it's a picture with an iguana with that college sweatshirt on, and the iguana's playing the bass. This thing looked awesome. If I can find it, I would love to post a picture of it. So that's CD number one. CD number two is the Eagles Blue album from like 1973, their first greatest hits album. And that's an amazing record. But I mean, it's the greatest hits. Like it's got, I think Take It Easy was the first track. Maybe Already Gone was track two. I bet I could still name almost every single track on that album because of how many times I listened to the CD when my blue, well, I never had Bluetooth in that car. So I would have to bring a Bluetooth speaker with me or I would, my uh, aux cord quit working and I mean, I could probably name every track on that one. And CD number three was the Marshall Tucker Greatest Hits album. It was the brown one. So it wasn't the big deluxe uh, orange one that you see in most stores nowadays. But I'm going to go back and talk about the Eagles Greatest Hits because I think I can name every track. I know it's Take It Easy, Already Gone, uh, Lion Eyes. I think that was track three. Witchy Woman was on there. Maybe Already Gone was track four. Uh, Peaceful Easy Feeling is on there. I think Take It to the Limits. God, there was some really good stuff on there. I wish that I could name every single one, but a lot of them, they get overplayed. Like, I can't listen to Take It Easy. I never really liked listening to Already Gone. After The Thrill Is Gone, though, that's a good one, but that wasn't on that blue CD. Uh, but let me go into that Marshall Tucker one, because I think the Eagles one had like eight or ten, and then the Marshall Tucker one I know only had eight. Cause it opens up with Can't You See, and then Heard It In A Love Song, which is, that's if, your parent, if you don't know that one, your parents definitely know that one. 
let's see what else they had. They had one like Ramblin', not Walking and Talking. That's on Searching for a Rainbow from like 1975. They had Fire on the Mountain. That CD is where I found one of me and Homeboy Big H, one of our favorite tunes, Desert Skies. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Desert Skies is on the, the Spotify. This Old Cowboy is the one that I'm thinking about. Uh, either way, shout out to Big H. There's the song Long Hard Ride, the instrumental, 24 hours at a time. Got that. That was an eight track CD that I absolutely loved. But the thing is, is they got stuck in the car with that. The six CDs, they, the, the, there was only three in there, but they just, you couldn't get a CD out and you couldn't put any more in. So that car is going to have those in there until whoever the next owner is. If you want to replace it, you can. Either way, we were able to sell that car for like four bands, almost five bands. And now I got that Subaru. I got the Red Dragon, the uh, car with no name, the Red Subaru Outback. Shout out to all the Red Subarus out there. I just saw a Shane Gillis bit the other day about uh, <laughs> when a plane was going down. If you want to call anyone, this is the last phone call you're going to be able to make. And he calls Subaru dealership is like you guys are pieces of I don't want to steal his bit. He's a comedian. I'm not. He's the one that can actually deliver the bit and you're probably looking at this with a straight face thinking alright guy talk about something else now and talk about something else now I will. So this is a note that I took on a Saturday morning in August about watching soccer because now that soccer's back I mentioned that earlier. I watch English soccer. I have a subscription for ESPN plus if I wanted to watch Spanish soccer but I don't have Paramount. I don't really care that much about watching Italian soccer because the best in the world in my humble opinion is going to be in England when I'm watching my Liverpool Reds. Are they the best in the world? Not right now. They're not. They're kind of rubbish to be completely honest. But man, when you're watching that game and there's a whole joke in America about how ugly British people are, that that's just something I had to take note of. Because I was drinking coffee, watching a game, just sitting in my bed laughing because they would like hit the ball in or that you'd get a corner kick and then you see the people that are in the background like, God, leave Moses. These people really do not get a whole lot of sunlight up there and need to go to take a trip to the dentist office. And I mean, I'm not saying I'm the most handsome spring chicken and it's like come on bro this is just notes that i take in my phone i just be saying stuff sometimes so if you get offended by that apologies uh if you got any good dentist recommendations i'm looking for one in nashville so if you got one hit me up i remember now what this saturday was that i was taking these notes because this is the saturday that i got to see with the marshall tucker bands in a cave I know I haven't talked about that, but I will be talking about seeing Marshall Tucker Band in a cave because that was a cool concert. But like I said, since I saw them, I haven't been listening to their music as much as I was. But I remember I took that weekend off, so I was able to watch my soccer game in the morning. And then that night I went out on Broadway. And if you know me, I'm not a big Broadway person. I do like to dance, so I was able to get out there and do some of that. I think we did that in, I don't know, maybe Luke Bryan's place or Jason Aldean. That's like the places I go. And I'm not really a Luke Bryan fan, per se. And, I mean, Jason Aldean, America, like, hates that guy right now. I mean, I liked Big Green Tractor. I had it on my iPod Shuffle. But ever since then, dog, I haven't really kept up with anything going on in that guy's career up until lately. But I don't even know, like, anything about what's going on. I just know that he has some music video, and I don't really care to entertain that thought anymore because ignorance is bliss. Why bother myself with all these details whenever I can just share my uneducated opinion with the rest of the world on the internet? Next topic. Uh, So on that same day, like I said, we were at Jason Aldean's and just some of the random conversations that you have with people in bars, like me and the homeboys were talking about favorite trees on our college campus. Just we're on the balcony overlooking Broadway, like that whole, you know, you see the AT&T Tower, the Batman building, you're looking down there. It's like, man, the city is mine. And then all of a sudden you and your homeboy are talking about, man, do you remember Remember that one tree on the back of the campus green over there? It was this big old oak tree. I remember I used to actually skateboard past it. I was that one guy on the college campus that would skateboard around. I would park like not even a mile from the student center. The student center is where the radio station was, and that's kind of my center of campus. I go there, set my stuff down, and I just walk around campus without a backpack just on my skateboard doing whatever my thing is that I like to do. But I remember there was a certain route that I would take on my way out because the hill was a little easier to go down than it was to go up when I'm going to. And there was this big old oak tree man and Auburn was known for their oak trees we had the tumors oaks that were poisoned by some d-bag Alabama fan I think that guy's either in jail or dead now I mean I don't really have any thoughts about that but like dude these trees are on I think like the national register of like historic items that you're not supposed to mess with and the guy just I guess he was drunk and poisoned this guy's an Alabama fan that lives like an hour outside of Auburn if you can hear me right now you know that I'm kind of getting amped about this and like I said we're talking about our favorite trees on campus like it's cool to know that we had a couple there was one outside of the chemistry building that I don't know what it was but it had like white but it also had like 
like maple leaves, like the red ones. I don't know. I'm just being, I'm getting on my hippy dippy ish right now, talking about trees and all that. But like I said, whenever I write notes down on my phone about stuff, I can just start riffing for a while. There's other cool places. I remember the hill, uh, rest in peace to the hill dorms. I think they tore down all of them now. I don't know what they put. Probably a parking lot. Actually, I doubt they put a parking lot. What type of college campus actually provides parking for all their students? Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. And then make them pay for God, I don't need to get into that. Like, that was something I always make the joke about bankrupting tow truck companies. Uh, but Auburn, God, if they find an opportunity to give you a parking ticket for literally any tiny thing, they will. I remember I went to go get my professional headshot updated. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take the blame for this because I didn't have a parking pass, but I was parked in this place for not even 20 minutes. I went to the library parking deck on just a random day of the week in my senior year. I was already looking rough and I was getting my photo uh, thing updated, added my LinkedIn because I'm about to be a professional adult. And I got like a $50 parking ticket for being in the parking spot on the top deck of the library for like 20 minutes. It's like, man, nothing gets past these dudes. Like, why is that so necessary? I don't know. I think I'm speaking for a lot of people. But like I said, I'm going to take responsibility for my actions. So, I mean, you can take that multiple ways. But I just think that that was a little bit unnecessary. Is that too much to say? On to the next topic because I'm kind of getting a little bit too animated about parking services. So, I'm going to get talk. I'm going to start talking about garbage. Not really, but this is a note that I guess I took maybe one day when I was driving. Okay, this is after the Marshall Tucker Day. So, I'll get back into Marshall Tucker in a minute. But... It's now that time of the year when the deer are starting to appear on the side of the road. And I don't live off like a big time country road. I live off Bell Road in Nashville, Tennessee. Go ahead, dox me. Come to my apartment, people. Come break down. Now, please don't do anything like that. But the deer are starting to show up and you're like, hey, look, there's deer on the side of the road. What up, Bambi and family? And then you look and they're all eating garbage. They're always eating trash. Like that just words cannot describe how much that can just get under uh, get under my skin or get on my nerves sometimes because it's cool to see that there are deer out there and then you realize that it's eating like a target bag i'm like come on dude no matter how hard you try to not litter like you could pick up after yourself and all that i don't really see myself as someone who's spending my day off going down the side of the road and picking up garbage that other people have thrown out i mean I'm just here to talk about stuff. I'm not really here to save save the world or solve all the problems, but it's just something that can get on my nerves, man, because I like seeing the deer, and I hate seeing, like, I grew up in a coastal area, so, like, we'd see turtles on the news every day that are getting choked out by six-pack rings, and now I'm seeing deer eating Target bags and, like, they got like plastic, not plastic gloves. What are those, uh, those food service gloves like on there? Not paws. What do they, what do deer have? Like their feet, a uh, clothed feet, maybe. I don't know. I don't really know stuff. Like I, like I say, when I'm doing this show, I just be saying stuff sometimes, but all right, maybe I can get into Marshall Tucker or I can go into Jimmy Buffett. I can go two ways right now. I think I'm going to go both ways. I want to go Marshall Tucker before I talk about Jimmy Buffett because Jimmy Buffett, no, I'm kind of getting into, I'm, I'm already getting too far into the weeds. Let me dial it back to Jason Aldean because that was a fun, that was a great Saturday night week. I had like three days off. I had Saturday morning I woke up, got to watch my soccer team on Sunday I went to see the Marshall Tucker Band, and then on that Monday, I had the day off. I'm trying to think of what I did. This is August 18, or no, this is August 19, 20, and 21. Okay, I may have got my days a little bit mixed up. It looks like it was the 18th, 19th, and 20th, and it looks like I must have had a pretty solid weekend considering I got to see one of the Mount Rushmore bands for me in a cave. And, like, I I tell, like, uh, one of the people that I work with, I, I like to tell stories about music to this person because they're a good listener, and it's just fun to have someone you can practice storytelling with. And I started talking about, like, flutes because my mother played the flute. Uh, she would play in church whenever I would be growing up. I like Marshall Tucker Band, they're big on their flutes. Or, like, pan flutes like John Prine, all those songs of the pan flute. It sounds like some type of, like, Lord of the Rings music, I guess you could say. But it's just cool getting to hear stuff like that. I'm looking back at my photos I couldn't really find a lot of photos from like the August 18, 19, 20, but I'm trying to see if there's anything in my like Snapchat on here. A lot of it is just stuff that's happening whenever I'm at work or on my way to work. Just dumb stuff like that. Let's see what we got here. But God, that was such a good weekend to have off, to be able to get like a, a night out, get a good one of my favorite concerts, and then just one day to relax because. I mean, I'm working like seven, not seven days a week. It feels sometimes that I'm working seven days a week. Like right before I went home for Labor Day weekend, I had to do like a, like a 10 day stretch. I think I was able to kind of break it up by swapping shifts with someone to make it like eight days, but that can take a whole lot out on you. And I love what I do. I absolutely adore my job. It's more of a blessing than it is work, but there's 
I mean, burnout's a real thing. Everyone knows that. No matter how much you love what you do, you can get burned out by doing too much of it. And everyone knows that, but I'm just reassuring everyone that thinks that it doesn't exist because it does exist. It's a very real thing. But after I get to see Marshall Tucker, I get to have a great weekend off with some fellas just doing just doing regular weekend stuff. And then so I have that weekend, then I do eight straight days, and then I go home. So I get to go home. I stay with some good friends of mine. I get to stay with uh, one of my old roommates, one of the best roommates I've ever had, and his girlfriend, literally like one of my best friends growing up. So it's good to get to catch up with them. They live in Birmingham, and I live in Nashville. And now that we're graduated and we're adults and we don't get to see each other, it's just, it's like I saw a meme about making plans when you're an adult. Like, hey, let's plan to hang out during spring break of 2025. And that like doesn't even sound unrealistic to me. So it was cool to get to catch up with them. And then I had, I think, like five straight days off for that. And each day that I had whenever I went back home was different. Like I had a day, like the Saturday, like I'm driving home on like a Friday, you know, getting dinner with the family Friday night. So like I leave town Thursday after work, stay with friends of mine. Uh, we get dinner there. The next day I'm driving home. I'm with my family, big family dinner at like one of our favorite places on the river. I like being on the river. There's this place, I guess I can, I can blow up the spot. I mean, there's not a whole lot of people that listen to this and I want to give a shout out cause it's just a good local spot that we've been going to for so long. Like we're going to tie this into Jimmy Buffett too, because Jimmy Buffett has a song about this place called the Bama breeze. And I mean, the Bama breeze to me is, uh, God, this is such hippie stuff to talk about, but the Bama breeze can be like any type of, you know, your water and all. I think it's really about this place called Pirate's Cove, or maybe it's the Florabama. It's one of the two, probably the Florabama, but to me, it was this Big Daddy's Grill place growing up, man. You get a hamburger, you get some fried pickles. I don't even like, I don't even like pickles, but when they're fried, that's the way that I like them. So you get that there. We got some crab claws, expensive ass crab claws. Those things are way too damn expensive right now, but this is just the first full night in town, like just a family dinner. You go home, you sleep so well because, you know, you're back in town. It's like a feast getting to see the whole family. The next day, it's Saturday. It's it's a football day. Um, it's like, you know, the family's going to go watch do football stuff. I just get to relax, hang out with one of my best friends growing up. Got to hang out with my cousin. And, like, I don't want to talk too much about, like, just, like, the stuff that me and my cousin talked about. But whenever it's, like, a cousin that you grew up with, not super close. Like, me and my cousin, we grew up in two separate places. Uh, but we always, like, got along well. But this weekend was, like, the first time we were able to really, like, be adults and catch up and just talk about stuff. And, man, like... I'm not a huge religious person in the way that I was growing up, but like hearing the whole phrase of like my cup is overflowing, like that's that's kind of how it felt. That's the picture I'm trying to paint for you without trying to get too Christian on you right there. But it was just nice, get, nice getting to be with family as an adult. And it's like, man, we just understand life a little bit better. And I don't understand it fully. You never will. But like I said, my purpose in life is to try and figure stuff out. And I'm getting a little too philosophical right now. But I brought my camera down there. I got to be on a paddleboard. I got some cool shots with my camera. And I talk about one of my favorite functions with that thing is the partial color wheel that I can do. And whenever you're on the water, there's kind of like a storm rolling in in the distance. And the paddleboards that we have are kind of blue. Just the different ways that the blue would pick up and everything else is gray. Just, God, those photos look so cool. I might have to throw some of those in. So the other photo I'm thinking about throwing in would be stuff that I took with my camera there. Whenever I listen back to this and I edit, I'll have to go find it. I think I was talking about how the old studio looked. I'm like 30 minutes into this recording right now, but it's taken longer because I'll pause and go look at stuff like that. But like that first Saturday, just to relax and hang out, being on the water, drinking Coors Lights, drinking Miller Lights, drinking cold beverages and enjoying ourselves. And then the day after that, we go to the beach and... And I'm not a big beach person. I'm not a big fan of sand. I don't like when sand's getting all in places that it don't belong and getting indoors and getting in shoes that I like. And then it's sand can get all up in your business. But whenever we go down to the marina, we take the boat out. It's a beautiful day. It's overcast. So, I mean, I'm wearing sunscreen. And this is such a weird common theme with me wearing sunscreen. But I mentioned earlier, light skin or was it fair skin, red-haired, freckled individual that, like myself, I got to wear that sunscreen, man. I can't be messing around with the sun, but overcast day we get to go to to the floor bama that bama breeze place we go there we get we got our bushwhacker on we get our bushwhacked and we're taking the boat out my one of my favorite hats i'm looking at it right above me right now it is an auburn golf hat it's like, it's like a rope hat it's like an old man style hat 
it was windy out there and that had to had to fly away from me but i dove off the boat in like shallow enough water i mean it was a good shallow dive i mean if i was in the olympics i think i probably could have gotten like a bronze off that one right there but i was able to get the hat even though it tried to fly away from me and we're just on the boat listening to music there's a whole lot of people down there because this is sunday of labor day weekend so labor day of course is the next day so we get back home and this you know you're having fun whenever you're on the boat all day and then we even stop at one place to just swim around near where pirates cove is and then i fell asleep in the car on the way back that's when you know that you had yourself a good day and then whenever we get back the sun is kind of starting to get lower on and then we just take the paddle boards back out me and my cousin we're out there on the water listening to some music because when we're on the boat, I got to be on the ox, but it's just a different type of vibe whenever you're back there. Because whenever you're on the paddleboard, it's a lot quieter. Like with the boat, you know, you got the motor on the back, and we got a big motor that's pretty loud, and you can't hear the music as well. But the way the sound travels on the water, especially with this Bluetooth speaker I have, I was in Target just the other day, and I saw that speaker. Uh, I have this Sony SRX B23, whatever the speaker is, that part doesn't matter. I got it not used, but I got it up. I guess you could what you could say it was used. I got it at a pawn shop about almost a year ago in North Carolina, in Asheville, one of my favorite stores in that town. And I was like, man, I'm just looking for a good bluetooth speaker and the guy knows audio he knows guitars he's like dude this this is kind of what you're looking for right here so i just took his judgment for it and oh my god the speaker is amazing and i got it basically new like uh, what he told me is that the guy had taken it and used it like once and he's like eh, i'm not a big fan but i saw it and i was like I could use it. It's got way better battery than my old one. But the old one I have, I still have it around. I mainly just use it to charge my phone because it's the original JBL charge. I got that thing maybe a decade ago for some holiday, I guess. I got it because I I needed like a Bluetooth speaker. I love listening to music. But it like, like I said, I've had it for a decade. The speakers are kind of busted. The battery doesn't work as well. But I still use it to charge a device if I'm going camping. I am now up to four different battery devices. I've got that speaker. I've got two actual battery packs. Well, I guess I have three actual battery packs. One of them is really small. Like I, I wish I knew what size to compare it to. One of them is like the size of like a thicker credit card. Uh, one of them is like a big power bank. Like it even shows what the percentage is on it. It's so clutch to have devices like that whenever you're on camping trips. Like I brought it with us down to the beach just to make sure that my phone could be charged because I got the iPhone 11. And I mean, it's not bad. The battery's not great on it. It's just kind of moving a little slower. You know how the iPhone is. We're up to like 15 now on the iPhone. So I'm going to have to upgrade at some point pretty soon, I'm sure. But man, just think about that beach day. Get to be down there. Favorite hat, favorite family, tie-dye shirt on. It's a good day, not even getting sunburned, but still getting some sun. It's just a vitamin. It's like I said, like it sounds weird saying the whole thing, oh, my cup overflows. But that's like the only phrase, analogy thing that I could use to describe how I felt after that at the end of the weekend. Because it's like the first time since moving up here, since being an adult, that I felt like I got to go home and do a full family beach type of weekend so it was just it was nice that's that's like the best thing i can say it was just nice getting to be with the family grilling out being with like one of my best friends just like family dinners going on seeing random dogs at the beach and going to my favorite coffee shop back home man on that monday actual labor day itself me and my cousin went to this coffee shop and I can blow this one up because this this place deserves all the fame, all the recognition, the coffee loft in Fairhope, Alabama. I need to get some merch for that place. I saw some cool shirts and like sweatshirts that I liked. I didn't end up buying anything, and I kind of regret that I didn't. But hopefully next time I go, they will have some of that same stuff there because I'm looking at the pictures that I took, and I'm like, yeah, I need to get more of that. But like this is the last day, so whenever we went to the driving range that day, and another thing about me is I like golf. I like all types of sports. Like I talked about watching my soccer team earlier. Not a big football guy. So like on the football day, like we watched the first drive of the Auburn game. We waited until they scored, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to go out on the water, listen to country music, drink a couple of cold Blue Mountain Coors Lights, take the paddle boards out, you know, wear the sunscreen, just do the Saturday afternoon thing. So like it's a football day. Then whenever we get to that actual Monday was just, let me see, we went to the driving range, went to a buddy of mine's place. My parents rode by us on their boat on the river. That was cool. It was just, it's one of the best Labor Days I've had in a while. And I've, I've well, no, not Labor Day. I kind of get, uh, it's like Memorial Day in 4th of July. I try and see which one's better. This 4th of July this year, I did a whole episode about that. That's like the best 4th of July I've probably ever had. But this Labor Day, that's one of the best Labor Days I've ever had. 2023 has been such a great year. 
Like, I feel like it started off kind of strange. Like, uh, I don't know, January through April was kind of strange for me. It wasn't bad. Like, it's been a good year. It's kind of, I'll see at the end of the year how I compare this year to all the other ones. I feel like 2023 has definitely been better than 2022. But, I mean, like, what am I even complaining about? Like, I'm living, I'm alive, I've been doing my show. I'm on the season finale of a podcast. I'm the guy that started the podcast after college, but... I mean, I don't think I'm hurting a whole lot of people. I think I'm having myself a good time. I don't think. I know I'm having myself a good time. Making it all the way through season one. Uh, there's going to be a little while, I think, before I hop into season two. I've already got a couple of ideas that I need to like bring to fruition episode-wise. Of course, I'm going to say this until I, I'm going to manifest it by saying it enough until I start working on it. But visual media, making like TikTok stuff, just voice. I'm not doing a lot of stuff with cameras, but I mean, if I do stuff with uh, like pictures and like a subway server clips at the bottom of it, I, there's going to be something. Just give me some time. We're going to get it figured out. I'm like 45 minutes into this. Not even 45. I'm like 43 and a half minutes into it. There's going to be a lot of breaks. I don't really want to call this a wrap on it because I didn't even get all the way through the notes. I just kind of started talking about Labor Day and looking at pictures of my phone to help myself get caught up. But let me go back to the notes. Let's see where we were at. So we already talked about <laughs> British people. We talked about deer on the side of the road eating garbage in the day that Jimmy Buffett died. I think I pretty much got through the Marshall Tucker concert, seeing the flutes, uh, solid light shows. I mean, it's cool acoustics because you're in a cave and hearing a flute come from there. I got a Marshall Tucker t-shirt. I like black t-shirts. That's something I've been like getting more of ever since this past year. I've been getting more black t-shirts I never really wore them growing up I don't know I didn't wear a whole lot of black growing up in high school I kind of did because we had senior year we wore black shirts as part of our uniform and like one of my favorite shirts it's a black and green tie-dye shirt what other like black golf shirts occasionally but this past year I've been finding cool like graphic shirts that are black I am of course one of those basic people with the purple rain t-shirt I got a cool one during my internship of like one of the radio stations that was under like the main thing that I was working for um what's the, the Marshall Tucker one that's the one that I was talking about. I got an XL and I mean, I'm not a very big dude. I definitely cannot fit into no XL t-shirt, but I'm just glad I got it. I like getting something to commemorate other than a photo whenever I go to good concerts. I didn't really get many good videos. And I mean, like the band was good. It's one of my favorite bands of all time, but this is like their 50th anniversary tour. They're not going to sound as good as they did in 1973 because they were amazing back then. I mean, the singer, he may or may not be an alcoholic. I don't really know. Did he sound like one? Maybe a little bit. Did everyone else sound fine? Yeah, they all sounded great, especially the dude that was playing the flute. I don't really know what's going on with that singer. I mean, I feel like I'm saying too much, but like I say, when I'm doing this show, I just start saying stuff sometimes. But let's go into that Jimmy Buffett thing. We kind of already talked about the Bama Breeze, but Jimmy Buffett's something that I grew up on, like being near the water, like on the river. Like I'm saying, like Jimmy Buffett was one of the CDs in our stereo that would play when my mom's cleaning the house. If we're on the boat and we're listening to the radio, my dad's got Jimmy Buffett saved on his iTunes because whenever iTunes first came out, I think he bought like the entire discography of Jimmy Buffett and whatever Kenny Chesney had on the market at the time. So like waking up on a Saturday morning at the place where... I started listening to Jimmy Buffett and kind of having to, that's like I, my friend Emily in Texas. I don't think she listens to this show, but she posted a story of literally one of my favorite, favorite songs. And it's a Jimmy Buffett song called A Pirate Looks at 40. It's like an outro. It's a weekend outro, but I wake up on a Saturday morning and this is how my day starts. I just look at my phone. And I said, oh my God, I, I could not believe it. And then no, my, my dad is looking at his iPad when I walk into the living room. And it was just, uh, it was a somber way to start the day. I went down to the pier, relieved myself because I can. Uh, yeah, I know that's kind of a TMI, but you know, this is my podcast. <laughs> I talk about what I want. Had a cup of coffee. I just went down there. I even made a playlist on my phone of just, I was going to do a whole Labor Day weekend playlist. I probably already deleted it, but I needed just a couple of songs just for what was going on at the time. Yeah, it looks like I already did delete that one right there. I, I have one from like that um, actual Labor Day 2023 of different songs that me and my cousin listened to while we were kind of closing out our weekend. Because like when we were closing out that weekend, we're talking about those memes of me and the homeboys at 1 a.m. standing in the kitchen just talking about life. And that's exactly how that weekend closed. Like that Saturday, we start with Jimmy Buffett dying. And I mean, that's a that's like a core that weekend, this past Labor Day weekend, it's like going to be a core memory of my life of Jimmy Buffett dying, doing like family dinners. Auburn won that weekend, hanging out with my cousin. Just, I mean, that's kind of a significant moment in my life. And I'm kind of glad that that is getting wrapped into what the season finale is of season one. Because, you know, it's the end of the summer. 
that weekend was the end of my summer. It just kind of the timing works out very nicely with that. But the next thing that I have written down in here, something that I don't really understand, but I talked about it earlier, but that circadian rhythm, one of the members of the Opry is the one that was talking about it. It's like an 80 something year old. This is like one of the smartest people I've probably ever come across. This dude's like an astrophysicist or nuclear science, not Scientology, but this dude is wicked smart. Starts talking about the uh, circadian rhythm. It's like your natural body clock, something like that. I was talking about how my body naturally wakes up at certain times but you know remember i'm a little i have a college degree but i'm not exactly the world's most educated human being so don't really hold that against me remember i am from alabama after all you can't give me all the credit in the world the world is at well jesus i'm getting way into the weeds right here i'm gonna have to edit some of that out but oh yeah this is another thing that was going on I, me like waking up in the middle of the night i had like an inception level dream whenever i went home for that weekend like i said i was working like eight days in a row but whenever i finally got some days off my damn subconscious was going crazy ever since that weekend my dreams have been like a lot stronger and I mean that's kind of just a weird thing to take note of but I had an inception level dream on I think that Saturday going into Sunday and I mean that has happened very rarely in my life and I don't I'm not going to get into the details of it because like it's not going to make any sense to people that have no idea what's going on but one last note that I took while I was down there is at the River House. That's a place where there is always going to be cold beer in the outside fridge. If that doesn't paint a picture about the type of place that we're talking about, I do not know what will. Uh, now, here's something that I've been talking about just in general all the time lately. And since I work at a music venue, there's like celebrities that come through here. And I heard someone say in like a podcast or a YouTube video, I talk about it while I'm at work too. But the fact that like celebrity celebrities are making cameos in my life, like the easiest one I can say is if you know country music, if you know the song I'm Proud to Be an American, sang by Lee Greenwood. It was written by someone else, I'm sure, but this dude sings one of the most famous versions of it, and we have a whole dressing room in the place I work dedicated to people that served in the military, like proud American stuff. And one day, like, I'm walking past it. God, that, the peas are popping like crazy on this. I'm trying not to do that, but... I'm walking past it and this dude passes by me. So I was like, oh my God, this is like Stan Lee showing up in a Marvel movie in my real life. Or like passing by like Willie Nelson's son. Like it's just cool when people are making little cameos or like this, the joke I always make is the first celebrity I ever met when I started working in show business. I know it, it's not like I'm working in show business for real, but it sounds good whenever you're telling the story. But the first celebrity I ever met while working in show business wasn't a person, but it was in fact Duke the dog from Bush's Baked Beans. Uh, shout out to Duke. No, no, there was nothing about rolling the beautiful bean footage. But God, here's another just random thing that I put. So it's like there's other dumb stuff that I say I enjoy about my job. And there are so many dumb things that I enjoy, like taking cardboard out to a dumpster, just having an opportunity to go to a part of the building that you don't go to, like a different parking lot, just running stuff out there. Because, I mean, it can get cold. It can get stuffy in that big old. It's a big-ass building. It's 101,000 square feet. Occasionally, it's nice to step outside and do some mundane task, like take cardboard out to a dumpster. At least you're not taking out legitimate garbage because that stuff, well, that reeks. But if it's just cardboard, it ain't even all that bad. And they just repaved the parking lot, so it kind of stanks out there. But, I mean, it ain't too bad. It's just dumb things. It's just little things like that that I enjoy about it. There's plenty of other stuff, but I try not to talk a whole lot about my job on here because my job is not my entire life. This podcast is more about the other stuff that goes on in my life, such as... Hating on the fact that James Taylor has a song called Fire and Rain because I don't really like James Taylor all that much. I don't know what it is people love so much about Fire and Rain. Uh, that or like how sweet it is to be loved by you. That's like every white person's wedding song. And sorry, James, but I am not f***ing with your vibe. Oh, but another thing that I wrote down right after I was making fun of James Taylor in my notes is uh, the different parallels and music. Uh, like when there's same chords being used, but the lyrics are different, uh, tones are different because it's coming from like different parts of the world. Like something I like so much about Krungbin's music, it takes influences from all these different cultures, all these different countries all over the world. But the two songs that I was writing about when I wrote the thing about parallels were Thank You by Led Zeppelin. That's off Led Zeppelin 2. That's like 1969. And then Can't You See by the Marshall Tucker Band. It's very similar chords. Can't You See was a couple years later. I don't know who, if that song, if, I don't know if Can't you see was written earlier on what was going on there but they just sound very similar if you listen to thank you i like the live version recorded at the bbc i think that's one of my favorite live rock songs ever i mean i, I that's actually kind of a strong statement because i like a lot of different live rock songs but if you don't know can't you see i mean that's one of the most classic southern rock songs of all time Next thing that I'm going to talk about. Let me see. Oh, I thought I saw someone. Don Schlitz. That's the guy that wrote The Gambler. Uh, I thought I saw this dude just driving across town one day. Because, like, 
like I'm saying, with celebrities making cameos in your life, once you start like knowing what these people look like and recognizing them and you just see them doing normal human being things, I don't know, whenever I'm growing up and I'm seeing celebrities on TV and stuff, it's like, oh my gosh, this person is holier than thou or whatever. Whenever you're a kid, you don't really understand that nearly as well or like being starstruck seems like something that would happen if like your favorite celebrity walks. I just heard some weird sound. I think that might have been a dog outside. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it unless you just hear a random bang and then this podcast stops all of a sudden that got really dark really fast for absolutely no reason at all um but it is cool whenever you'll just randomly see someone out doing their thing especially now that i live in a town where there's a lot more of these people just kind of walking around i'm still waiting on the day that i run into one of my favorite singers mr sturgill simpson i am waiting on the day that i cross paths with either that dude or like billy strings last night at work we had some bluegrass fans and i love bluegrass music i talk about it all the time it's one of my common themes that and talking about nice on Altima's and fried chicken, but it was cool getting to talk to those bluegrass fans right there. Let me see. It looks like I wrote down like a full anecdote. This looks like something that I like wrote down while I was driving, so it's not exactly great writing right here, uh, but like Don Schlitz, I mentioned that's the guy that wrote The Gambler about the song about the train bound to nowhere, met up with The Gambler, both too tired to sleep. That is a funny coincidence. Yeah, Friday morning. I'm basically caught up on my notes right here. I can look at uh, my photos, maybe see if I can piece together some more stuff. We're at like 50, 55 minutes in or so i'm gonna edit out i don't know if i'll mention like the timestamps in there but i kind of feel like it it's more real whenever you hear details like that we've caught up on all the lighting uh the summer's over the weather's starting to get nicer i can sit outside i set my lights up so i can exactly like enjoy myself a little bit more on my back porch better weather for hiking and going outside a lot more Here's something that I had to do, though. I'm an adult now, so I uh, had a hole. I had a nail in my tire that I got. I drove seven hours from home to get back to Nashville a few weeks ago after the end of Labor Day, and I got a nail in my tire, and I had to get it replaced. And I wasn't exactly super bummed out by it because it was like, well, this is one of the cold, hard facts of life. Like, you got to just deal with this type of stuff. Like, uh, shout out to Kroger gas stations for having free air. Like, I I feel like a professional now that I can go to into uh, Kroger gas station they see me they immediately turn the thing on get my air pumps I get it back on the road but I had to go get it replaced yesterday so that's like an adult thing I had going on and now that I've lived in Nashville for over a year I finally drank the Kool-Aid and I bought myself a pair of cowboy boots they're not like full-blown cowboy boots but they are Ariats uh, they got the the heel they're square toe I'm not really like a um, rounded toe type of person and it's like the square boot heel on the back it's not the big cowboy heel because I ain't sitting in no stirrups I ain't climbing on the back of no horse it's all about having a comfy shoe to look better in when I work. You know, I feel like you're a little bit more confident whenever you got some boots on. You got your <laughs> kickers on. I'm going to have to go back and use my bleep to edit out some of these because, you know, I try and make it a little bit family friendly for everyone. But if you made it all the way here, this is the end of season one of the quarter life crisis. I hope you all had a great time listening. Um, if you were here from start to be like start to finish of right here, I don't think this is going to be the end. It's the end of season one. I don't think I'm going to change the name of the show. Of course, we all started with an idea of a podcast about the subject to change. I named an episode subject to change quarter life crisis, man. Shout out to the root brother, man, giving me the name. He and I played some music the other day. We went to his apartment and we just played some music. I got to play my bass, played my guitar. Oh, he, I played his guitar and it felt good just playing instruments again. I've been trying to play more music, trying to do more other creative pursuits outside of doing my show. I need to just bite down and get Adobe Premiere and After Effects and start working on like the visual media for the show. But I can at least say that I'm proud of myself for doing my one full season. That's almost three o'clock in the afternoon on my off day. So I'm going to have to go and edit all this. I got plans for the afternoon. I got plans. I got things going on. Life is good. We're up right now, and I hope that you are too. I'm just going to have to riff until the end of this thing, but if you ever want to email the show, you ever want to reach out, the Instagram is at jpw.jpg. That is at jpw.jpg. It used to be the real DJP 2020. The real DJP is dead now. That guy died when he graduated, uh, but I switched it because I like taking photos, and I'm JP Williams. That is me. I hope you all enjoyed this show. Send me an email at qlcpod at outlook.com. That is qlcpod at outlook.com, and I guess I'll catch you in season two.